Hey there, art nerds. Today we are talking about brushes and I have three different sets to talk to you guys about. We've got this set from AliExpress. We've got this Diane W set from Amazon. And then we have these Chinese watercolor brushes, literally for Chinese watercolor, also from Amazon. Although, honestly, you could get any of these off of AliExpress as well. What I am looking for is I am looking for some good quill options because I was really kind of blown away with the Paul Rubens quills quality. It was just great. And I'm also looking for something comparable to the silver black velvet watercolor brushes. So I'm looking for something that is fairly affordably priced, maybe is a mix of synthetic and natural hair, and that handles really well. So today we're gonna take a look Look at three different, hopefully, types of brushes and hopefully we will have three winners in our midst. If this is what I think it is, this is a package that I ordered from AliExpress. Once we ascertain for sure what is inside this box, I can pull up the listing and we can talk about it a little bit more. But I know that a lot of companies white label their products from Chinese manufacturers anyway. So rather than paying the upcharge, I've been trying to explore getting them from the source, saving a little bit of money because often not paying all that extra money for a name brand kind of changes how I feel about the product and whether or not I enjoy it and can recommend it to other people. And since I teach both kids and adults, it's really nice to be able to recommend art supplies that are good as well as affordable. That's one of the big things for my watercolor kits. So it is what I thought it would be. It is a set of watercolor brushes from Art Secret. So this is what I have purchased on AliExpress. I have seen Art Secret brand products at, you know, individual mom and pop art supply shops, as well as some bigger name stores. So this is a brand that while it's not super common in the, in the US, I have seen it around. And I was particularly interested in getting it from the source. And like I said, not necessarily paying the upcharge on it. So it was fairly simply packed. There were, as I find, as I move the brushes out of the way, some brush caps that were loose. So we have two packages here, but let's take a look at the listing first. Here is the order that I placed from the Art Secret official store. So we have three open stock brushes and then one brush set. Actually, actually we're missing some brushes, maybe. We'll find out in a minute. But I wanted to get kind of a different assortment, some things that would give me an idea of how good these are, as well as some things that I'd like to try that I've never had a chance to try, as well as a couple of weird things that might be game changing. I also purchased this watercolor painting brush, Blue Squirrel Horsehair Mix Acrel Drawing Pen Stationery Art Supply set. So it's a 10 piece set that also seem like it would give a good overview of brushes. So those of you who've watched the channel here for a while, y'all know I really like rounds, but I've been trying to move towards trying different brushes, trying brushes that can offer different effects or that have just different properties and qualities to them. So we have here a Art Secret Natural Wood Rod, one piece, high quality squirrel hair watercolor Crocrell gouache art supply stationery tools and this one seems to be like a rigger where it has the longer brush to it. Now supposedly that can be great for those of us who have shaky hands because this long brush can kind of help stabilize that. I also ordered this. This is something kind of unusual for me. This is a dagger striper. So it is a longer, it's like a cat's tongue, but a really long cat's tongue. And I'm really looking forward to playing around with this one because it feels like I could get some really fun brush strokes with this. 
Also got a sharp tip liner for detail, wooden handle, anti-drop hair acrylic art tool supplies so if you guys watch that live stream where i was uh doing the da vinci samples and i tested out a few new brushes that i happened to really like um some of a couple of the ones that i had had this sort of feature right where we have like the belly of the brush is larger it can hold more paint it can hold more ink and then it comes to a really fine tip and while I liked those I didn't necessarily want to pay Moe's prices for them and I figure they are art secret brushes so I ordered I think it I think I ordered one from Aliexpress then here is the set so pretty affordably priced for 10 brushes but it looks like we get two quills Maybe a filbert, a diagonal, a detail brush. This looks like it might be for pigment, a mop, a large quill, and then some hockey style brushes. And they have two different sets available. The 13 piece set, which is this one, and the 10 piece set, which is the one we are taking a look at today. And then here's some of the interesting ones. So this looks like it might be a pigment brush, right? Because it's got like really short bristles. So it looks like the kind that you might use for stamping or stenciling, or if you're familiar with Japanese wood block prints, this can be used for those really soft gradients. This thing is just, I just couldn't resist. It's so weird. They're striper brushes. And I'm sure these can be very useful in calligraphy. Um, I did the three stripe because I could see myself using the three stripe, but they do come in like six stripes and they're individual brushes attached to a handle. And that was just too weird not to try out. Then we have, this looks like a longer brushed sort of quill. So kind of similar to what we were looking at in the beginning, but this time in a quill style. So it should maybe have more flexibility and be a little bit looser. And then finally, this thing with the bamboo, it says bamboo, but I don't think it's a bamboo handle. I think it's just a bamboo style handle. But you guys can see from the prices that we've been looking at that getting them from AliExpress, should they prove to be good, this could be a more affordable way to get some hopefully decent quality brushes. So that's what we're here to find out today. Um, as a watercolor comic artist and illustrator, especially as someone who's been really trying to work on my brushwork and not just rely on filling in the color, which is what I tend to do with rounds is just fill in the color. I want to move towards utilizing my brush and being more expressive with it and using that to help with my storytelling. I thought this could be a great way to maybe get out of my comfort zone and to try some new things. So we are back at the desktop. Let us start with actually maybe they are all here. So I have to say although everything is very simply packaged it is well packaged. All of these came individually wrapped. The brushes I don't know where this is coming from the brushes all these two these three ah okay I found where it came from three of these brushes came with their own brush holders which is really nice that's something I haven't seen in a while like since Windsor Newton in a while we also have oh it's tinier than I expected the handle is small and the brush is longer than I expected so and then they all have what looks like the art secret holographic seal of authenticity. But basically everything is really nicely packaged. These two are really nicely packaged. This is cheaper retail packaging, but it's still really nice. The cheapest package thing here is this. And it's, it's, it's packaged kind of like a makeup brush would be. So it's still going to protect it and it's still in good quality. So, so far I'm pretty impressed. Now, obviously... We're not going to know how good these are until we actually try them, but I am so far in, a, in good spirits about it. So here is the Art Secret brush set. This is the 999 set. And if you guys would like to try these out yourselves, 
if you like what you see, I will have links down in the description where I got everything. And I don't have any kind of affiliate code with AliExpress or Art Secret. This is my own opinions and just me as a watercolor artist and comic artist trying to find some new stuff that will make my art better or make it more interesting or challenge me or inspire me to improve. So the bamboo case, it looks like it was laser burnt. Pretty cool. Um, it's either bamboo or seagrass. Feels really nice to touch. Has a zipper. Zipper's well made. Has a protective flap. Everything so far is really pretty nice. So these appear to be all synthetics which isn't I'm sorry that the way I intoned that made it sound like I was disappointed I'm not um there's a bunch of sizing in the brushes so I'm going to need to wash all of that out not a problem so what I'm going to do is I am going to oh this is like sealed in here I have mixed feelings about that because I was hoping to reuse this and if I cut the top off I can't just slip it in but that's okay, that is fine. I think this is sealed in as well, okay? So I'll set those to the side because I need to grab a pair of scissors for that. Is this also sealed? Yeah, so they used like a crimper to seal it in. Here we go. Actually, there's a little bitty bit. This is the only literature, literature we've received. This is the S8 Dagger Striper, item number S8. S8 is made of natural blue squirrel hair, brass ferrule, and woodeen handle. The, the kerning is fun, but not bad. And the English isn't bad either. I'm just being stupid. It's ideal to draw long line and uniform threads. With incredible flexibility and compact, it holds a perfect line and is easy to clean and long lasting. So then in, we have some contact info, both for China and for Korea, and this was made in China. <laughs> it's so cute. It's really cute. <laughs> it's like, it's a, it's so cute, it might not be practical. I may have to find a way. I wanted to use the cap, and they glue dotted the cap in. Uh, I may not be able to use the cap, because I may not be able to remove all that glue. All right, into the trash you will go. I mean, look at, Look at this. Look, look how, look how tiny and cute. This is like a Kara brush. I have to draw Kara holding this. <laughs> so, it is so little, it might not be comfortable to hold. I may have to put a pencil extender on this to make it more comfortable. <laughs> it's ridiculous. All right, so then we also have the brushes that are in these fairly decent. I'm gonna save these. Um, brush holders. They also have caps on them. Let me remove that because we got to wash all this sizing out and for that I'm going to use Old Masters brush soap. You could use like a gentle bar soap that doesn't contain lotion or baby shampoo. Ooh, okay. This could go either way. We will have to see how this looks after we remove the sizing because it already looks like it might have some stray hairs but it may just need to be conditioned also these wires right here that were used to hold the brush to the handle they're kind of sharp and they're kind of sticky outy which means you could they could end up like kind of eating into your hand that's something that has happened to me before so just pointing that out as something to be aware of um some people have covered that with fabric like medical tape some people have used electrical tape just to cover that up you know there's thing you could put sugru on it there are ways you can adjust that but as your resident ADHD artist with arthritis I do try to point out those kind of accessibility needs and then this one is it's kind of like a cross between this quill and the dagger striper. It's like a dagger quill. Don't know if those handles are wood. They feel very light, but they could be a balsa wood. They do feel very light. And the build quality on this one is probably the best. We have the metal ferrule with the double crimping. That should hopefully 
last a little bit longer. I'm going to need, like I said, to cut into these. So I'm going to put these over to the side and then we have the ones that came in the kit. I think these are all synthetics. So this is a filbert. This is another, they call this a scruffy. This might be a scrubber brush in their set. Whereas this, while this could be used as a scrubber, and I may use it as a scrubber, it can also be used to dab in pigment, which is a technique I've been wanting. Having watched David Bull and his Mokuhan prints, been feeling inspired to try, try adapting some of those techniques to my own. Then we have a slant brush. We have a very splayed out, oh, it's a mop. Okay, that's fine. For a mop to be splayed out like that, that's actually not a bad thing. We have a liner brush and it's in kind of a Chinese or um, Gensai style. We have an RT round, which is, this is actually, so they, with the, the wires, they're actually kind of dipped into the material that they've used to wrap the quill. This is going to be more comfortable on the hand than these, even though theoretically the fibers in these are probably going to be nicer than the fiber in this. We have a RT round size two. We have a RT round size five. We have a, they call this a feather. And as you guys can see, it actually, it's made, it has like a stiffer bristle at the top. And it's kind of like a hockey brush, but it also kind of thins out a lot. This will be interesting. I bet this would be good for grass because I don't paint enough of that. And then we have a flat one or a flat brush. And this is interesting because with my hake brushes, the the Japanese and Chinese ones typically have like, it's like paper or it's a sewn binding here. And you can see the bristles through it. This is the first one I've encountered that like from the outside looks like a Chinese or a Japanese flat brush. And then you look at it from the sides and it's like combined a Western style, like a paintbrush style hake brush with, um, a Chinese or a Japanese style hake brush. So I'm going to actually review these kind of independently because I think, I mean, this is all going to be in the same video, but I'm not, I'm going to try not to mix them up for you guys because I kind of have the feeling that this set might be a good starter set if I like it for me to be able to recommend to people. So I don't want to get them confused. So this is all the AliExpress stuff. I say I'm not going to get it confused and then I immediately start putting it together in the same pot. Next, I want to unbox the Diane W Squirrel Hair Paint Brushes. So Diane W is a white label company. They, <laughs> I, they, I've seen them sell like a variety of things, including superior products under this name. So I have no idea who actually made these brushes. I bought this off of Amazon. I will pull that up in a minute. The back of the box says Diane W Professional Mo Four Brushes Blue Handle, and it's made in China. So I'm gonna go ahead. Aren't these little pin knives cool? I have to be careful not to like try to use them as like an actual pin, but these are for paper crafting, and they're much more comfortable in my hand than Exacto blades. Packaging is nice, but that does not necessarily mean they spent money on the interior, so we'll have to see. Okay, all right. So, inside, oh, they're all individually wrapped. While that is wasteful, I also kind of appreciate that because it means they're more likely to be protected. Usually when it's a more expensive product or a higher quality product, I do want the care necessary to make sure the product arrives to us in one solid piece. And they are also held in this gift box. I'm not going to keep the gift box with elastic and a fairly inexpensive foam liner. And there are four quills inside. This is the listing for the Diane W Professional Mop watercolor brushes, squirrel hair, and horse hair, synthetic blend, round paintbrush set for art painting, gouache, size four, four size, blue handle. So if you're familiar with quills, 
quills can be pretty expensive, especially nice quills. So I wanted to see if these might be a cheaper alternative. Now, obviously they're gonna promise professional quality because all of these have been pr promising professional quality. We also have height quality. They offer us some advantages. The sizes are in one, two, four, and six. They say it comes in an elegant black gift box also provide the brush length. Now they also say great gift for your kids, friends, beginners, artists, or anyone who have fun in painting. So basically these brushes should be for everyone. Nice thing is though they do offer a satisfaction guarantee. To be fair, you could just go through Amazon for this. I did not read the reviews for these. I think maybe, no, I usually, when it comes to art supplies, I usually don't because I like to come in as unbiased as I can. But if I have any questions about these brushes, I will check them. However, most of the reviews are pretty good. So that's pretty, although we also have some kind of disappointed. So we'll see. We're going to put them to the test. I'm not, given the price for four watercolor brushes, I am not expecting miracles. I don't even expect them to be as nice as the Paul Rubens quill that I have, which I think is way nicer than it has any right to be, especially considering the first one I got was a pack-in with one of the Paul Rubens palettes. Like, it's just, I use it all the time. It's that red-handled quill you guys see me using. I love it so much. I'm kind of hoping to find some more similar to that. We're going to just click the Diane W link real quick to give you guys kind of an overview of what they have. They do have a lot of watercolor brushes, but as you guys can probably see from here, they sell just a variety of things in general. This is actually what I thought I had ordered. You can see how these look like the silver black velvet watercolor brushes, like with just slightly different labeling. If they are not the silver black velvets, they are a, knock, a good knockoff of them. I would still be interested in trying those at another time. I think I went with the quills because I've just gotten kind of obsessed with quills and I really like painting with quills and I don't have a lot of quills. So I was like, I'm gonna attain more quills. So these are not quite as nicely packaged as the brushes that I got from Art Secret. They are all heat sealed. So I'm going to have to get, ooh, actually, these are very similarly heat sealed to the Art Secret ones. Knowing that Diane W is a white label company, it does make me kind of wonder if these are originally Diane W watercolor brushes. I'm gonna have to do some digging. Y'all let me know if y'all know. I'm going to set these aside because I am just gonna cut through all of them at the same time. And then finally, we have these more traditional Chinese style brushes. So these, okay, these are actually a lot heavier than I thought they would be. They have some good heft. And I've had some pretty good experiences poaching Chinese watercolor supplies to use with my watercolor, like the Chinese watercolor weights that end up getting used quite a fair bit. So I'm always open to trying new things and things that are adjacent to what I'm doing. So these feel like they have, first of all, they came in that metal Ziploc, then they, well, okay, they came in an Amazon bag, then they came in that Ziploc, then they are individually plastic packaged, which is a, a little much. Are these also heat seal? Am I gonna have to get scissors for all of these things? Um, I think they're metal bodied though. So since I'm going to cut through everything in one sha sha sha, let's move over to the desktop to talk about getting these on Amazon. So this is the listing. They are Flydom Art, traditional Chinese calligraphy brush, writing brush pins, Japanese sumi painting brushes, weasel hair, goat hair, ink brush, two pieces set, weasel hair and rabbit hair. And you know, on the computer, they look a lot bigger then we'll see how big they are. But here was my thought on this. If they were smaller, that's great. I always need good, smaller brushes for like eyelashes and eyebrows and those kind of really fine things. And mine tend to get chewed up very quickly. So, you know, this would get used. If it was bigger, it's still gonna get used. So either way, I would be good. This is also, $8.99 for both of these, if these are any good at all, that is a really good price. 
Now, they offer a couple of options. Ah, for material types. So the other is weasel hair and goat hair. And I find goat hair tends to be a little soft for what I like to paint, like for this size. I like goat hair for larger sumi brushes. Um, so this is actually, what I ended up getting is actually a better fit for me. I hadn't noticed that. There was a, two different material types at first, but it worked out. These are calligraphy brushes, so I'm hoping I can get the kind of tight, fine lines with good elasticity that I'm really looking for when it comes to painting watercolors, doing watercolor illustrations, and doing watercolor comics. Now, see, we have a lot of options. This can be kind of a mixed bag because some of these are going to be really well made, and then some of these are going to be hot, disaster, garbage, shedding hairs all over the place. And it's one of those you don't know until you try. <laughs> and these kind of weird, impossible to pronounce names, I actually found out what's going on with that. So Amazon has been encouraging Chinese companies to do business on the Amazon website. Cool with that. But they need to register a trademark in the U.S. Now, a lot of names are already taken. And since this is a name that theoretically is not ever going to need to be pronounced, unless you're a YouTuber like me, then this random assortment of vowels and consonants, H, how do you even pronounce it? Anyway, it's not meant to be pronounced. That's not the point. They just wanted to trademark something that they could actually trademark that would be available so they can do business in the U.S. So mystery solved. Now we know it is not some weird, nefarious plot. It makes sense once you hear it. Um, but it also, so when they are a random assortment of vowels and letters, it does make it harder for people like me who are buying art supplies and we want to keep buying from brands we like and brands that have done well by us. It can be hard to remember this specific combination of unpronounceable letters. So my advice, and it's probably not going to be heated. It would honestly be better if you went with your original Chinese name, just, you know, anglicized, because we'll be able to remember that better than what looks like a random passcode for a name. Everything's been snipped, so hopefully we can easily extract our watercolor brushes. And the blue Diane W brushes do have a brush cap on them. This is important because if you travel with your watercolor brushes, you want them to stay in good condition. And while there are other options on the market, including brush tubes, if you're just starting out, these kind of brush caps can just be a real lifesaver. And uh, they're a nice pack-in. Now we are going to have to head, or I'm going to have to head over to the sink and wash the sizing out of all of these. I'm going to do that off camera. Y'all don't really need to see how that's, I mean, it, it's not important to see how that's done. I do have videos where I talk about that. Come on. Oh, come on. There we go. Good job. So these are the Art Secret brushes. Now, while I like these tubes, I realize now that it is, they're stiff, so it's hard to get these brushes out. And I'm trying to be careful because obviously we don't want to damage the brushes. Oh, okay, this might actually be bamboo carved to look like bamboo. Huh. And then this one, I just sliced it so that I could like rip into it. No point. Ooh. Woo, that is like a makeup brush and it is soft and they actually put, so we have our little wire coating and then they shrink wrap plastic on top of that and that is going to kind of cushion those metal coils that would otherwise cut into our skin. And then finally, oh, were they actually open on the other end or did I just happen to bust through it? Okay, this one is not metal. This is wood and this one, okay. It had just busted. This is also wood. And they seem to have a hole in the other end. So I am going to go ahead and take a look at what we can take a look at. So the Flydom Art ones, you have to unscrew them. They do have sizing in them. The caps, if you can thread it right, they do seem like they screw on and post, which is 
the, the posting part is nice because it can give you a different balance to it if you need it to be weighted a little bit more in one direction. Um, it also means you don't lose your cap. And then here is the other one. And they also have a hole in the top and that's a breather hole so that when you cap this, your brush can still dry. I appreciate that because it prevents your brushes from mildewing. So I have a lot of cleaning to do. Let's take the caps off our Diane W brushes. Not sure how I feel about their plastic on their quills, but we will find out in a minute. So off to the sink to wash out the sizing. I've gotten all the sizing washed out of these brushes and I have to say it was pretty difficult washing the sizing out of these brushes. A little bit difficult washing the sizing out of these brushes and then some of these, particularly the quill style brushes, it was harder to wash the sizing out of. Now, it could have been that it is a cold day outside and I had my taps on full cold, which is good for the glue in your brushes and not good for removing sizing, nor is it good for arthritis. So that might have been part of it. But I did want to point it out because you're going to have to be patient with it. The sizing will come out. The brushes are not ruined. It's just very stubborn sizing. These brushes have had a couple of hours to dry. They're not totally dry. I don't expect them to be totally dry. But it does mean that I can get started with playing around with them and demonstrating them. And I was thinking, since none of us have infinite time on this earth, that I would probably do this in time lapse and just narrate kind of the highlights on top of it. So that way you guys can really just see how they handle and I can give you kind of like the highlight reel of notes for what you should keep in mind. So the order I think I'm going to do this in is I think I'm going to do the Art Secret set, the 10 piece set first. So that's what I'm putting into this right here. Then I will do the other Art Secret set. So that's the open stock brushes that I purchased, kind of piecemeal. Then the, the Diane W and then the Chinese watercolor brushes. And I think since we're working with a lot of Chinese watercolor brushes, but also with a lot of larger brushes to really best demonstrate what they're capable of, I thought we would use, I believe this is the Akashia Gensai watercolor palette. So they have nice large pans. I am not going to be talking about the quality of the paints today really one way or the other. I do have a review of this if you're interested so I'll link that for you guys. But I did want to show you what pans we're going to be using today so that you guys, you know, have a good gist of what we're doing. We're going to start with the Art Secret 999 set. In this set is a 1 inch flat, a 3 4 inch feather, a size 5 quill, a size 2 quill, and a 2 slash 0 quill, as well as a mop and a liner. So the 1 inch flat was very prone to dry brushing on this cotton rag watercolor paper. It doesn't seem to be particularly drippy though. It feels pretty good in the hand and it's worth further consideration. The 3 4 inch feather seems like an effect brush. It could be great for doing grass. It's a little gimmicky, but it's a gimmick I like. Grass, fur, maybe even feathers. The shorter dark hairs around the white longer hairs sort of serve as a belly and I've had no drip issues so far. The size 5 quill seems fairly well made and what the heck, it's actually pretty good. It does seem fairly drip proof. I loaded it up with water and paint, shook it and it didn't just drip all over the place. It's capable of thin and thick lines and it has a really nice petal shape. The size 2 quill is a little more drippy but not at all bad and not nearly as bad as many synthetics I've used. Otherwise, I have the same notes as above and I am honestly impressed. 
the size double zero quill or the two slash zero quill. Same notes as above, but it has really good snap. The one half inch mop. It's okay, but it's kind of small for a mop and it wants to splay out really quickly. The splay effect though is where it shines. Loose texture effects grass fur like a big version of the feather brush, but it holds more water and is capable of a wider range of brush strokes. The two liner is nice. I haven't really had a chance to ink with it, which is kind of what it's intended to do, but it still seems promising. The 14 Filbert is fine as a synthetic Filbert. It's not as sharp as I'd like. I like mine in a cat's tongue style, but still very functional. The 12 Slant, and I might like that one a little bit better than the Filbert. Both are good, very serviceable brushes. The 14 Scruffy, I'm assuming that it is a lifting brush. It's a decent scrubber that isn't too stiff. So my overall thoughts on this set. I'm not sure if I misspoke earlier, but the set is actually $27.90. For that, you get 10 brushes and a seagrass case. I would say that most of these brushes, particularly the quills, are way better than I expected them to be, and I'm excited to paint with them. The jury's still out on the flat, although it's promising, as well as the liner and the usefulness of the feather. That said, I paint a lot of grass, so at least it'll get a test run and the filbert and the slant are serviceable and well built but not exciting but not useless all in all i am impressed with this set and i look forward to really putting it to the test These other art secret brushes are just open stock brushes that I thought were interesting. I'm going to have them all linked for you guys down in the description below. So we're going to start with the 3 fourths inch comb brush flat. This is a weird one and it has kind of limited use. It's great for even striped patterns or, or plaids of a specific size and it would probably be great for pin striping and it seems to work well for that. Let me know what you guys would use this brush for. Next is the 16 Squirrel Hair Mix DS. This one kind of reminds me of a bird wing. It's another one that I'm not sure what I would use it for, but it handles well and the hair is a mix. So it's just soft enough, but not too wobbly. The handle is fine. It hasn't started to bother me yet. It's capable of really fine lines, thicker marks, and wide swashes. It's a little bit drippy if you shake it, but it's not too bad. And I love the beautiful dry brush it has to offer.
Next is the S8 Dagger Striper. This Lilliputian cutie is another weird one. It's a striper brush, so it's designed to do pin striping. I kind of like the beautiful dry brush it offers. It would be nice as a water effect brush, capturing the light reflecting off the water through dry brush. A lot of these brushes are very skippy, and I think maybe it's the brush size the size of the brush basically, and the surface tension of the water in the brush on this cold press paper. Next is the 6DS Squirrel. It might mean dagger striper. I bought a lot of daggers and stripers in this lot. I guess it's because I'm trying to find something new. This one's kind of small for easy handling. The handle itself is kind of uncomfortable. Next is the 4LR Squirrel. I assume LR stands for Long Rigger. I'm not a big fan of these smaller, longer quills from Art Secret. They aren't bad, the hairs are a little stiff and scraggly, and this one really did not want to release the sizing. I was still scrubbing that out. I might try to condition them and see if it helps. One thing this brush has really going for it though is that it's a long rigger, so a longer brush, and it can hold a lot of water without needing a redip. Next up is the 12 2 layer liner. I've tried these before in smaller sizes and I'm kind of on the fence about them. They were kind of expensive from Moe's Art Supplies so I thought I might like it if I paid less for it and tried it in a larger size. But unfortunately I think I might like the long rigger brushes better for these sort of endless brush strokes because the belly on this brush that's supposed to feed into the longer synthetic liner hairs seems to separate off cutting from the water flow. It's a good idea, but it's not quite there yet on the execution. Finally, the 8330 PB. This thing is kind of weird, but I really like it. That texture, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to use it for, but fur, fur needles, sand, concrete, pebble textures, brick textures, anything with this sort of soft, small, irregular texture might work really well. Plus it's fun. Y'all will be seeing this one around. Overall, my thoughts on this, keep in mind, this isn't a set, it's just disparate interesting brushes because I wanted to try something new and kind of shake up how I handle my watercolors. Many of these brushes are so niche, but I really like the bamboo handled wing looking brush. I really like this pebbly texture makeup looking brush and the smaller rigger brush, I think think I can probably get some use out of it. <laughs> this thing over here, not, I'm, I'm sure I will figure something out with this. I'm a stubborn person. Uh, it's also just kind of goofy and very different. And it doesn't pretend to be something it's not, but it is super duper niche. Now, the two regular dagger brushes, the quill dagger, and then this micro brush over here didn't really do it for me. Maybe I'm just not great with dagger brushes. Maybe I don't really know how to use them. I'm not sure what's up with that one. But you know what? In a couple of years, I may feel very differently and fall in love with them because I didn't always like quills either. You guys can also notice we've got some stray hairs and they're kind of wavy. I'm going to try conditioning some of these that look like they might have weasel hair or a longer uh, squirrel hair because they're not as soft and fine as I would like. So I may, my opinion on these may change. But what I don't think I'm going to change my opinion on is the liner brush. I was really, when I saw these in the store in the beginning at Moe's, I was really excited about these because as somebody who likes dip pins, I know that a caged nib adds so much ink flow to your work. It makes inking a lot easier because you're not dipping as often. This serves the same purpose as that coiled spring, but unlike the coiled spring, as I flex the synthetic liner, it separates from the belly, which would hold all the paint or all the ink, and you kind of lose that ability. So I like the concept. 
but I think they're going to need to try different fibers and keep playing with it because it's not working as well as, say, a regular rigger would work. So now for the Diane W quills. Ever since I tried out the Paul Rubens red quill, I've really started to change my mind on what quills have to offer and what I wanna see from quills. So the size six quill is well built and I like the chunkier handle. The blue handle is kinda of pretty too. The brush itself seems fine. It's capable of finer lines and has good flexibility. It's a decent quill that will probably see more use. The size four, same notes, maybe a little easier for me to handle. This is a size I'm more comfortable with. Size two, same notes again, and it might be a good alternative or improvement on a regular round. Now, size one is where I start to have mixed feelings about this. It might be kind of small for me. Those narrower handles are a little bit harder on my arthritis, but I like the snap on this brush. I feel like at this size, I crunch up more on the handle and the wires start to eat in my hands, especially as they get wet. So my overall thoughts on this set, $38.99 for all four brushes seems like a good deal for quills, since in the US, decent quills tend to start around 20. So just for the six and the four, you're getting a good deal. A pretty good set, I'll have to noodle around with the two-in-one brushes. The quality is decent, the wooden handles feel good, it has a good weight to it and a nice finish. The hairs themselves feel like they're decent quality. It will be interesting to see how this set holds up. my overall thoughts on this Diane W set. $38.99 for all four brushes seems like a really good deal for these quills since in the U.S. Decent quills tend to start around 30. So just for the six and the four, you're getting a good deal. It's a pretty good set and I'm gonna have to noodle around with the two and the one brushes further to see if I start to like them as I get used to them. Overall though, the quality is decent. The wooden handles feel good. They have a good weight to them and a nice finish and the hairs themselves feel like they're decent quality. It'll be interesting to see how this set holds up over time, but I am sure you guys will see me use these in later videos, so keep an eye out for that. Finally, the Chinese calligraphy brushes, starting with the black bristled brush. I feel like this is a decent quality brush. The bristles might be a little short for Western watercolor, but it might be nice for inking or line art. I find these are a little bit heavy, but they seem really well built. The build quality seems really nice. I would like a little more flexibility in the bristles, but that might be a personal taste thing rather than a build quality thing. The red bristles might be a little bit softer. I'm not sure if these brushes are really the best fit for me and what I normally paint, but they might be fun for edigame watercolor. So I don't dislike these brushes. They're just not the best fit for what I am currently making the kind of art that I'm typically focusing on right now. So I'm gonna have to revisit these at another time. As for the Chinese calligraphy brushes, I'm not sure if these are the best fit for me for what I normally paint, but they might be a lot of fun for edigame watercolor. Overall, I'm really pleased that I found so many winners today. With the student grade showdown I've been working on, I've gotten kind of used to spending a lot of money and a lot of disappointment. So even shopping wisely, in that regard has been a bit disappointing. This brush haul was a lot of fun and I've been turned on to a couple newish brands to me and some new styles of brushes that I've never tried before. I think I'll be buying more watercolor brushes from Art Secret and trying more of the Diane W quills in the future. So some of my favorite brushes from today are the feather brush. While it is kind of a specialty case, it seems like it's gonna be great for grass and fur. Two things, I paint pretty frequently. I was actually pretty impressed with the quills in this less expensive set here. They handled better than I anticipated. And the scrubber brush isn't bad at all. It's really exciting to have found a very affordable watercolor brush set that I can recommend to other people. And I know it'll be able to perform well. And I know they're going to be getting a wide variety of brushes so they can do a variety of techniques. Usually 
really I've leaned on recommending rounds because acquiring a lot of different specialty brushes is really expensive and you really don't need a lot of specialty brushes. But a set like this makes it easy to have a few specialty brushes while also having some good workhorse brushes in the mix. The only brush that I'm the most hit or miss on is the mop and it's because it's really kind of small for a mop and it dry brushes really quickly. So while it could make a good specialty brush, it doesn't really work well as a mop. So if you're getting this set, I would recommend you also get a larger mop than this. Another brush that I really like is this weird little sprouncer texture brush. This is gonna be perfect for sure, shorter fur types. Whoo, what a tongue twister there. Almost said something I'd have to edit out could be good for downy feathers like on chicks or penguins or kiwi birds. It also could be really good for rock and pebble and sand textures. I'm really looking forward to what kind of interesting textures I can add to my work with this brush. Now, I found some not so, not so for me, let's say brushes. Like the dagger brushes, especially with how short this handle is and how bad my arthritis has gotten, not a good fit. But while I'm not entirely sure yet how I'm going to use this one here, I'm definitely going to try to make sure I use it because I think it, it could be good for big, looser florals. And I've really been trying to get my artwork to loosen up in quite a few ways, again, because of the arthritis. So these are all art secret brushes. This is a set. These were all bought individually. All of these came from AliExpress. These are Diane W watercolor brushes. As I mentioned at the beginning, Diane W white labels from other companies. So I don't actually know who manufactured these. For all I know, these could be relabeled art secret brushes. That said, the quality and the price point are a good fit for me. They kind of remind me of the Paul Rubens quills that I've been using a lot and I happen to really like. And it allowed me to buy some larger size quills without breaking the budget. So I'm definitely going to be experimenting with some other Diane W watercolor brushes in the future. Now, the only kind of eh, and it's really a very personal thing, the Chinese calligraphy brushes. While I think they could be good liner brushes or they might be fun with edagame watercolor, they are not such a great fit for what I currently do. That doesn't mean they will never be a great fit because people's art does evolve, but for the time being, they're not such a great fit for me. But I do think the quality is pretty decent and if you are looking for this type of brush, these brushes here might be a good fit for you. It's really a your mileage may vary sort of situation. So. Hopefully, if you're on the market for watercolor brushes, whether you want something very affordable and you're starting out, you're looking for something new and interesting to add to what you already have to kind of liven up your brushwork, or you've fallen in love with quills and you want an affordable way to acquire some more quills, Hopefully, I've been able to demonstrate some brushes for you guys, turn you guys on to some new things, help you avoid some things that might not work for you or might be a little too niche for what you're looking for. And regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me today because I sure enjoyed hanging out with you guys. It would really mean the world to me if you would check out my art. You can look at these social media sites here. And I would also love it if you would check out my watercolor web comic, Seven Inch Kara. Let me tell you just a little bit about it now. Dive into a world of watercolor adventure with 7-Inch Kara. 7-Inch Kara is a watercolor webcomic that follows the adventures of Lilliputian Kara as she discovers a huge family secret and sets out to explore the world outside of her dollhouse. You can read it at 7inchkara.com and Volume 1 and Volume 2 are both available in the Natto Shop. Initially, I wasn't going to do the field test as part of this video. I was just going to use these brushes here and there to see how I felt about them, but the opportunity presented itself and I thought I might as well, rather than sitting around and waiting till I made myself actually do it.
So I decided I wanted to paint a Mardi Gras bead dog to start with. It was something I wanted to paint anyway. I've been trying to fill up these little Canson watercolor sketchbooks that I have, and I wanted to use as many brushes as possible. So this is from the Art Secret set that I thought might make a good beginner set for people because it's a lot of the brushes you'll need and it's very affordable. So I started out with the flat brush and I found that I kind of struggled to apply a wash with it. For some reason, it just did not want to actually apply the paint to the paper. I think it's a surface tension issue. I'm not yet sure how to remedy that. So most of this is going to be me playing around with like the feather brush, using it to kind of do just different effects. The feather brush is a lot of fun. You can use it to kind of disrupt what you've painted to kind of add some chaos in there. You can use it to add some texture. You can use it to add some interesting water to it. It's definitely kind of a limited use brush. I wouldn't recommend you like go out and buy one if you aren't already interested in one or you're not getting this particular set, but I'm glad they included a strange brush, at least strange to me. I'm glad they included that in the set because it kind of makes things a little more interesting and variety is the spice of life. I'm going to spend the majority of this little sketch playing around with the different quills. The larger quills are fine. My only problem starts to be with the smaller quill and it's not really the build quality, it's just the size of the handle itself is painful for me <laughs> and my arthritis, it's, um, it kind of just digs into my hand and it isn't really that comfortable to hold. But that's really just the smallest one that's a big problem. The two larger sizes are fine and that's not really a noticeable issue. The mop isn't really great, as I said earlier, as a mop, but it is kind of interesting as a texture and a special effect brush. I don't think I used it too, too much for this. I may have like used it to add some water and to get some of the colors to move around a little bit more but it really wasn't going to work particularly well for me as a mop. I also did use the liner. I like the liner quite a bit. It's really good for just nice tight controlled lines. Basically what you would want a liner for. It succeeds admirably. I think I like it a little bit better than the two Chinese calligraphy brushes that I bought. I do not have any field test footage for those. Um, if you're looking forward to that, I apologize. I just did not work with them in the time period that I was working on this video. So you'll probably see them in an edigami video and I'll try to remember to tell you guys what I think about it then. But again, that's not really my wheelhouse. So it may not be my advice, my opinion on it might not be the best. But the liner in this set, I really liked. It's a little bit smaller. It's a little bit more flexible. And I found that it was just able to do what I was looking for the liner to do. Now I did make it a point to also use the little scrubber brush in here. I have a few different scrubber brushes. I have one of the Creative Mark white scrubber brushes. That one can be a little bit too scrubby and will tear up your paper. I have a Zen scrubber brush that I really like. And I'll probably be using that one a little bit more. It's a gentler scrubber brush and it's great for just lifting out small areas. This scrubber brush is somewhere in between the two. I'm really glad they included one because that can be a really helpful way to lift out color that you don't want. And I think it is a wonderful addition for a set that might be recommended to a beginner or someone who's just starting on their watercolor journey. But would I specifically pull it out of this set to use it? No, not really. And here's me using the liner brush just so that you guys can see. I actually find it more comfortable to hold than the smallest of the quill. Now, what I didn't end up using was the filbert and the shader brush or the slant brush. They just weren't really relevant in this illustration and they're pretty standard for synthetic filberts and synthetic shader and slant brushes. So they're really not particularly remarkable and I really couldn't think of a way I wanted to use them. That was me using the mop brush to add in some texture and do a little bit of weird dry brush with it. Just trying to find ways to make it useful. My only real complaint is that the wooden handles on the flat and the feather brush don't seem to be sealed. So if you get them wet while you're rinsing out your brush or you put it on a wet paper towel, it will actually bleed. So you do want to be careful about that. It doesn't seem to be totally waterproof.
This illustration was an excuse to mess around with the art secret set of brushes. And while this illustration of a Mardi Gras bead dog did not turn out the way I wanted it to, that is not the fault of the brushes. I was just trying to find different uses for the brushes, as many different techniques as I kind of could. I am pretty impressed with these. The flat here does not hold a lot of water, so it can be kind of hard to do a wash. I also noticed that if this part gets wet, it will leave like brown marks on your, like if you rest it on a paper towel like I do. So you're gonna wanna be careful about that. It seems like the handles are not fully sealed. I was able to use the feather brush for a few different, just to add some texture in. And like I said, I'm just messing around with it. Um, I did use the mop to kind of break up some of these shapes, really kind of taking advantage of the fact that it could both hold water and do some dry brush. Again, I would not really use this as a mop. And I did find that this brush is pretty springy. If you are not used to a quill being this springy, that could be a challenge for you. But I could see this one being really great for brush calligraphers because it has that really nice snap. So all in all, just from what I've used of these brushes on this slightly overworked disaster of a watercolor sketch, I like it. I like these brushes and this isn't necessarily a full field test, but I really just could not wait to start playing around with them. And I wanted to paint a Mardi Gras bead dog anyway. So um, I look forward, as I mentioned at the end of the last segment, to playing around with these even more, getting used to them, trying out some new techniques. But I wanted to show you guys these brushes in action and kind of play around with them, trying to paint something, even if it didn't turn out super successful if you can't tell what i was trying to paint just google mardi gras bead dog you should be able to find it. it's deceptively simple but i should have sketched him out first and it would have been a little bit more successful but anyway uh i just felt inspired to try out these brushes and i wanted to share the results with you guys this is a little snippet from another tutorial that I'm working on. So it's a very short segment, but I wanted to specifically focus on when I was using the Diane W quills. And I did use them intermittently for this piece, but I didn't really focus on using them because they are slightly larger. And for all the small details, it was easier for me to just go back to my silver black velvet brushes. So you see there is a silver black velvet, that's a size six. Next to their smallest quill, it is still quite a bit smaller than their smallest quill. So if you're working really small areas, mm, these are not necessarily the best fit for you unless you are comfortable with larger brushes for smaller areas. I'm trying to work into that comfort zone, but I'm not there yet. Mostly I use these quills in this instance for my three brush gradient technique, which I'm gonna demonstrate here. I also use the Paul Rubens brush that you guys see all the way to the left. It's the red handled brush. It is still one of my favorites, but if you blindfolded me, I don't know that I could tell the difference between the Diane W and the Paul Rubens. Well, that's funny because if I was blindfolded, then I couldn't see what I was painting. But in terms of just like handling, like if I wasn't looking at the brush, if I wasn't paying attention to the brush, they're both pretty good. I do think the Paul Rubens is a little bit better, but the Paul Rubens brush alone is around $30. Whereas this set of four was around $30 for all four of them. I've also mentioned this a bunch of times, but I, I'm gonna say it because I mentioned it as editor text while editing this video, but these are actually art secret brushes, or I'm pretty sure these are actually art secret brushes. I've seen these exact same brushes on the art secret AliExpress page 
minus the Diane W screening, but still having the blue handle. It may be cheaper to get them from Art Secret from AliExpress if you don't want to per pay the like slightly upcharge for white labeling. I don't know off the top of my head how much those cost versus how much they cost on Amazon. And frankly, that price might be subject to change. That does sometimes happen with good art supplies that are coming in from China. They are introduced at a really affordable introductory rate and then they slowly get more expensive or sometimes you get a really good product and then they slowly start diluting it with a lower quality product. But given the fact that I was really impressed overall by the Art Secret brushes today, I would say you're probably pretty safe if you're comfortable with ordering them from AliExpress. You're probably pretty safe with the Art Secret brushes. I don't think they're going to degrade in quality anytime soon. I've seen them around, gosh, since I was like a teenager. They're not super popular over here, but like uh, Dixie Art Supply used to sell them. Moe's sells them. So like independent stores around here will sometimes sell them. So I've seen them around for a while. I don't think they're <laughs> looking to downgrade their quality particularly anytime soon and we're actually going to talk about them a little bit in, in a little bit more depth but in general I like these quills I did not like the smaller two of these quills I found them a little bit difficult to hold but the four and the six are great and this is a very affordable way to get a four and a six quill So the Art Secret official store has a brand story page and I have to admit this is really challenging to read on top of the photo but I am going to highlight it and do my best. Let's get that highlighted. All right. So Samina Forum Shenzhen Co. Limited in Longang District, Shenzhen. Ping Shang Tang Hang Hideki Port Wing Cosmetics Factory. Factory is located in the back garden of Hong Kong to the forefront of reform and opening Shenzhen. It is a professional production of Toiletries Factory. Since its 1993 inception, we have been upholding the integrity, management, and common development. The service aims to innovation, aggressive spirit of enterprise as a guide. After all the factory workers in the joint efforts, we constantly develop new products in the vast customer base, establish a good image quality, and establish a long-term trade partnership. Our products are exported to Korea, Japan, Europe, Southeast Asia, and other countries and regions, and establish a good reputation in the industry. We are constantly updating equipment to improve production, and a number of strong ideological, theoretical, strong, skilled team of professionals, stable quality raw materials, procurement channels, to produce fully able to meet customer demand for products. We start from the initial single brushes, extended now to brush, easel, sponge brush, beauty tools, makeup accessories, and other fields. In the fierce competition in the commercial development, high quality products is essential. We always strict quality control from the customer point of view for the sake of customers. The introduction of advanced Korean cosmetic industry experience, ISO 9001 quality management system and 5S management system. Constantly on the staff and staff training, instilling the concept of quality. We have dozens of people from the initial development to the scale of hundreds of people. We continue to move forward, continue to improve, continue to move towards perfection. Factory is willing to continue in the future to continue to work together with countries inside and outside the new and old customers and common development. My company mainly produces cosmetic brush, nylon feather semi-finished products, makeup tools, supplies, nail brush, nail supplies, oil paints, watercolor pen, brush, acrylic brushes, and other products. Products exported to Europe, America, Japan, and more than 30 countries and regions. The export of products and brands in the world enjoy a certain reputation. Founded in 1976, South Korea, mainly domestic sales in Korea, moved to China in 1991 to open up foreign market, markets, sales in the world. And then the address, and then their manufacturing process, if you guys are interested. They do use animal hair, including wool, horse hair, weasel tail hair, squirrel dyed hair, newer hair, etc. Mixed wool, whole wool processing, nylon hair, PBT nylon hair dyeing process, mixed wool made of a single color, two color, three color, imitation badger hair color, <laughs> color, imitation precious animal hair color, and natural white, etc. Natural animal... 
sorry, natural animal hair according to the needs of a variety of different purposes and processing of various animal hair by mixing a ratio of mixed wool, pure single kind of animal hair. And then they have a short video here. I assume this is a demonstration maybe of their brushes. Now I've gotten some kind of mixed information on the site. There are some sources on here that say they are a Korean company or South Korean company. Um, as you guys can see, also talks about Hong Kong and China. So to the best of my knowledge, they were started in South Korea and when they needed to kind of bump up their production, they went ahead and moved to China. But since we often don't have this kind of information available to us when it comes to AliExpress stuff, I wanted to share it with you guys. Oh, another thing, those blue Diane W brushes, I found them on the Art Secret site and I think I could find, I think I saw, I don't remember 100%, but they sure look very familiar, the Chinese watercolor brushes as well. So I think all of the brushes I reviewed today were originally manufactured by Art Secret. I know for a fact the obviously Art Secret ones were, and also the Diane W brushes were as well. So if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit like and consider hitting that subscribe button to let YouTube know that you'd like to see more from me. I do a lot so many watercolor reviews and tutorials here on this channel and hopefully today I spent some money so that you guys could spend your money a little bit more wisely when you're buying art supplies. If you like what I do and you want to help me continue to do it, you can join me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash soup. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I am so excited to get to painting with some of these watercolor brushes. Let me know know down in the comments below which of the brushes we looked at today you are the most excited to see put into real world use and a watercolor brush or brand that I haven't talked about here on the channel that you think I should take a look at. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!